they return to their own schools, students will take copies of these tapes so that the benefit of this seminar can be spread throughout the world. The transistor is extending the power of man's brain in wonderful calculating machines called computers. The computer is really an electronic abacus. On an abacus, mathematical problems are solved by moving beads with the fingers at the rate of a few a second. In a computer, electric impulses replace the beads and thousands of transistors move them at the rate of two million a second. The computer can solve problems in minutes that would take human mathematicians months or even years to figure out. To help farmers produce more milk per cow, representatives of the United States Department of Agriculture collect information from farmers on the amount and kind of food that a cow is given, the length of time in pasture, the amount of milk and butter fat she gives, and many other items. Hundreds of thousands of facts are fed into a computer, and in a few minutes it turns out a complete analysis of each cow. This project would be impossible without the computer. It would take a staff of human mathematicians so long that the answers would be worthless by the time they figured them out. From the computer, each farmer gets a report telling him exactly how much it is costing him to feed each cow and how he might change his feeding practices. Now, doctors can see your heartbeat when you're walking around with the aid of transistors in a new type of electrocardiograph. This part of the machine is really a small radio transmitter in which transistors amplify the heartbeat and broadcast it to a recording machine. Before this machine, doctors could see the action of the heart only when the patient was immobile, connected to the electrocardiograph by wires. Now they can study the heart when it is under the strain of physical activity. Another medical device improved by transistors is the electroencephalograph, which measures brain waves and is used for diagnosis of epilepsy, brain tumors, and to study the action of the brain under unusual conditions. Before this machine was miniaturized with transistors, it had to be permanently installed and was available only in large city hospitals. Now it can be carried in the back of a car and several small hospitals can own one jointly and move it speedily. With this tiny capsule, doctors can see the pressure inside your body. It is only one centimeter by three centimeters in size but it contains a battery, a pressure diaphragm, and a transistor. The amount of pressure on the diaphragm creates a varying electrical impulse, which is amplified by the transistor and broadcast to an oscilloscope. When swallowed, the pressure of the various organs of the body through which it passes acts on the diaphragm and creates a picture of what is happening inside your body. If you were blind, transistors would help you to see with your ears. In this school, blind students are being taught to do electrical and radio work with the aid of transistorized instruments. The transistor converts the kind and strength of electrical current into sound so that the blind worker can determine the strength of a current. Another instrument to aid the blind uses a phototransistor to interpret different colors or shades of brightness into sound tones. As the surface gets darker, the tone gets lower. When pointed at a light surface, it emits a high tone. The development of the transistor was based on ideas and observations of many men in many lands who were not trying to invent anything. In chemistry, Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev, a Russian, predicted the existence of the element of which transistors are made in 1871. In mineralogy, Clemens Winkler, a German, discovered this element in 1886 and named it germanium. In physics, Michael Faraday, an Englishman, 
and E. H. Hall, an American, made significant observations in the mid-19th century on the flow of electrons through metal. But perhaps the greatest single contribution was made by the German mathematician Max Planck, who in 1901 developed the quantum theory. Now, for the first time, scientists had a basis for understanding the flow of electrons through solids. Based on his ideas, theoretical physicists all over the world developed the science of quantum mechanics which made the invention of the transistor possible. None of these men worked alone. Through reports of their work translated into many languages, there was a free exchange of ideas so that each could borrow from what others had learned. Each stood on the shoulders of those who went before. In existence only little more than a decade, the transistor and the miniaturization which makes it possible has already brought about great strides in many fields and it has just begun to help us add to human health, safety and welfare. Perhaps the most important of all its uses is in laboratory equipment, helping scientists to work for us by finding still unconceived benefits which pure science may bring. Meanwhile, the transistor has magnified man in all his works. Lengthening, strengthening, and speeding his stride in every direction. The transistor has given men a great new mechanical advantage, making them giants among living things in both old and new endeavors. With the dream of the ages come true, man has a means for controlling major natural forces of his world with a little giant that he can hold in the palm of his hand.